so it came to pass that the day was to be saved by the most unlikeliest of heroes. A small child, unwillingly thrust into the workforce. One disaster after another had been diverted due to her diligent and cunning decision-making. With the kingdom on the verge of knowing everlasting peace and prosperity, our hero could finally rest their weary head, but only after one more critical decision was to be made. A decision of great weight, a decision of immense importance, a decision that could possibly kill hundreds, even thousands of people. Oh my God, you've made the wrong choice. You didn't think things through. You've doomed us all. Everything's on fire now. We're all covered in fire. How could you have done this to us? Well, well, what? Oh, Dad, I was. Oh, I must have been having a nightmare. It's over now, sweetie. But since you're awake, I think it's time you and I had the talk. Out of one nightmare and into another. Sweetie, there comes a time in every young person's life. What? Dad, you don't have to do this. When they have to work their dad's shift at the guard shed while he places a bet on the goblin ball match down at the pub. Aw, oh, Dad, do I have to? Today was the day I was going to start off on a grand adventure with my friends. I want to sail the open sea. I want to fight ogres. I... I want to throw rocks at things. You think I didn't want to throw rocks at things when I was your age? But I had a duty. I had a responsibility. I had to work at the guard shed while my dad placed a bet at the goblin ball match down at the pub. Did he ever win anything? Do you think we'd be stuck here if he did? But I'm 12. Won't we get in trouble? Not if we don't get caught. Come on. I'll show you how to handle anything that comes up. Okie dokie, ready for me to very quickly show you how everything works? Oh good, everyone loves a tutorial. No time for a full rundown, so I'll sum it up like this. The key thing to remember when being a castle guardsman is... Dad, someone's coming. What do we do? Uh, okay. I guess the best way to learn is by doing. Let's just hope there's someone completely plain and boring. Good morning, Mrs. Abernathy. How's your day today? Plain and boring, as always. Bingo. Would you mind if Lil looks after you? Oh, not at all. It's always a pleasure to see your daughter, Shamish. It's Hamish. What is? Never mind. Now, Lil, when a visitor approaches the guard shed, they'll generally start by stating their business. I'd like to state my business. I bring a basket of baked goods to my son and his family once a week. Oh, would you like one? After they state their business, it's pretty much your call what to do next. You can click on them and interrogate them. There's tools, the phone there on the wall. You only get three action points. You get it, right? Not really. What do we need tools for? You can pick one and it does something. Come on, Lil. I've really got to speed this along. The Goblin Ball game is about to start. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm inconveniencing you? Oh, no, not at all, dear. I don't mind helping out. But the princess is really gigging the ceremonial for a slingshot. <gasps> she is? Sweet jumping jitters, we gotta get to that game. Let's wrap this up, dear. Seamus? Tell the girl what to do! The name is Hamish. No, it's Mrs. Abernathy.
didn't we cover this? That's your inventory bag where you keep the things people give you or that you confiscate from them. In other words, your sweet, sweet loot. Looking in your bag for something to use doesn't cost you an action point. I already told you, clicking on the person means you interrogate them and hear more of their story. It's the best way to find out someone's true intentions. Sometimes. Sometimes? Sometimes using a tool will do the job better, or the phone, or it's a combination of things. I don't know, you can spend all three action points just interrogating them for all I care. Our tools. If you want to use a tool, you have to make sure it has a crystal to charge it. Here, I'll show you. I'll add today's crystals to the tools that don't have any. That way I have a well-rounded arsenal. Why do the other tools already have crystals in them? I carried them over from previous days. Any other questions? Why does a bullwhip need to be powered by crystals? No more questions. <laughs> No humming. This x-ray scanner can see through most types of clothing, flesh, and bone. It uses low-grade radiation. Do not use on trolls. Truth spray. You spray it, and they tell the truth. Honestly, that's what it does. It's a metal detector. You figure it out. You can use this decoder ring to decode things. Not exactly sure how it works. The instructions were written in some kind of code. You use the Wicked 3000 to make the big decision to let someone in, or send them packing. Choosing this will end the tutorial. Can I finally get out of here? Feeling stuck? This phone is for calling the royal advisors and asking for their help, but all they'll really give you is their opinion. You can get a hold of Lieutenant Stryker, Captain of the Guards, and technically our boss. Hello, who's there? or First Councilwoman Ash, the head bureaucrat of the Sprawl, with a real mind for politics. This is Councilwoman Ash. Hello? Hello? Is somebody there? And finally, the Royal Jester Malcolm, chaos personified in human form. Hello, you've reached Malcolm. Please leave a message after the goose honk. Hey, where'd the goose go? Well, chase after it, for goodness sake! Each call costs an action point. You use the Wicked 3000 to make the big decision to let someone in, or send them packing. Now you can choose to use the Wicked 3000 at any point during a turn, but sometimes it's better to use up all three action points to find out everything you can, by any means necessary. Sometimes? Yeah, and sometimes people are in a really big hurry, like I am right now, so just pick a damn lever already. Sorry, I don't have time to hear Mrs. Abernathy plead her case again today. We're just going to let her in. Great job, Lil. Your mother would be so proud to see you now. After my delivery, I'm off to watch the big game. Got my grandson's inheritance riding on a tip that the Stapleford Snughorns are gonna win it today! Here's a tip. Never lend Mrs. Abernathy money to bet with. Let's hurry along to the game. We don't want to be late, do we, Hamish? My name is Shamish. No, wait, it's not. Oh, I better go. Time to put on your big kid pants. You can do this. More like I'm being forced to do this. It's only for today, I swear. Come meet me in the tavern when the shift is over. Good luck. Good luck with your illegal gambling. I don't need luck. Believe me, he does. Okay, Lel, you got this.
charmed to make your acquaintance, young Gateminder. I am Tyronius Athanatos, son of Briel and Darunia Athanatos. I have been summoned to deliver the keynote speech at the Festival of Magical Freedom tonight, hosted by the Mages Guild. Will you require anything further? What's your speech about? Oh, my dear child. It is obvious to me that you do not possess a magical bone in your body, and my speech, therefore, would only serve to confuse and frighten you. I doubt that. I think I could figure it out. And many non-magical beings have attempted to learn the arts, and many of those have gone mad trying to even comprehend them. Be warned. So what's this? The Festival of Magical Freedom, anyway. Tonight, hundreds, maybe thousands, of like-minded mages, shamans, witches, wizards, and warlocks will gather to express our rights to use our gods' given talents without having to bend our knee to the preposterous laws of lesser beings. Lesser beings like me? Precisely. I imagine you don't have to check your ego at the door at an event like this. You can just bring it right in with you. That is exactly the kind of thing a smag a non-magical being would say. Now enough of this foolishness. Let me pass. family heirloom. Generations of powerful magic wheelers have imbued an essence of themselves into this simple locket. I will not part with that locket. You will not part with that locket. Huh. Thank you. You have a keen eye, young guard. Potential. I see potential here. The House of Thanatos, and indeed the entire Mages Guild, thank you, young guardian. You will go far. Good afternoon. I am here to pick up my two kids from their no-good, stingy, low-life of a father who happens to be my lying, cheating, low-life of an ex-husband, Orlando. His address is there on this incomprehensible, illegible letter my kids sent me. Believe me, I would love to have him get off his sorry butt and bring them to me for once. It was his week with them. No, I'm sorry. It was his and his new girlfriend, Callie's week with them. And do you want to know what the kids say about her? They say she's fun. I'm sure the letter they wrote is all about her. Can't decode it to save my life, though. My kids' writing is so lousy. I don't understand. Do you stop being fun when you reach a certain age? No, you just get more tired. Kelly really hit it off with our children, Polyphemus and Orlando Jr. She's got a lot of energy and gives us special treats. That's nice, but what district are you going to? What district? I told you, the address is on that letter I showed you. It's the only thing written that's legible. You need a decoding spell or something to read the actual letter. I love my kids. If you really loved your kids, you might have chosen better names for them. They aren't bad names. Polyphemus is a traditional Cyclopean name with a long history in my family. 
Orlando Jr. comes from. Well, you could probably figure that out. Moms are tough. This woman's having a rough day. I'd rather save the charge. I haven't had someone see me in my skivvies since... Ugh, I guess Orlando. This woman has been through enough. I'd rather save the charge. a lot younger than me. She probably has a lot of energy. Well, you try giving up the best years of your life and pushing out two baby cyclopses. Orlando is a for leaving me for her. A real brother. And when he gets he likes to his own when he thinks no one is at home. Have fun with that little surprise, Kelly. Ugh. I just had the most vivid wine night feeling. Whatever. I guess if my kids have a couple more days with their father, it's not the worst thing in the world. You've just given me a free weekend. Thanks, little girl. Anything I can do to help the plight of the single mother. What in the bloody blazing blasted hell is the hold up? Why have we stopped, Welp? Well, sir, the guard. Silence! Speak when spoken to, or you'll get the whip! Welp! Yes, sir. Now, you, child, let me pass. I have important business to attend to. Come on, shake a leg. B.S. waits for no man. B.S.? Bank of the Sprawl. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry, sir. I was just slouching. Only for a second. I'll make sure that none of the blood gold falls out of its case. You nincompoop. It wasn't me using the whip. If it was, believe me, you'd feel it. Wait a second. Did he say blood gold? Isn't that illegal? He didn't say blood gold. He said bloody gold. It's a form of slang he must have picked up from somewhere. Isn't that right, you bloody idiot? Yes, sir. W whatever you say, sir. I'd like to take a closer look at those gold bars. I think I need to hold on to these. Why, you greedy little urchin. I think I like you more than ever. No, it's not like that. Oh, of course. Just remember, if you make any form of profit off of those, you're as much to blame as I am. Now, since you are finished rifling through my personal belongings, you insufferable petty little monster, let me pass. What kind of business do you have at the bank today, sir? I shan't be airing the details of my B.S. appointment with some nosy little brat tending the gate. Mind your business or you'll get the whip, child! Oh yes, we mustn't keep you from your ever-so-important meeting. Hm, B.S. is right. you know the louder you are the more important you are that's why i'm so powerful let my loud bossy jackass friend through it 
it's about bloody time. Get moving, whelp. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Silence. Nobody was talking to you. With all due respect, sir, but you were talking to me. Don't be impertinent. Onward! Lil, you gotta close down the shed for the day and come with me immediately. There's no time for your irritating brand of sarcastic millennial wit. I can't believe they requested you. By now you've heard that Princess Desdemona has disappeared, right? Well, she's disappeared. Nobody saw anything or knows where she went. And any other week, the royal advisors might have given her a day or two before sounding the alarm. But with the mucky mucks from Petrard and Marvog in town, we have to get her back before things around here get any worse. I hope nothing bad happened to her, but what does any of this have to do with me? <laughs> I asked my boss the same thing. In fact, I said, why the hell would they need that piece of... You know, that's not important now. Do what you have to do to close up shop here, and then you're coming downtown to the city council chambers with me. Summoned? Lilith, guardian of the southern gate, step forward into the light. What is this? Who are you? Can somebody please tell me what exactly is going on here? Lil, you have been chosen. To play the hit game that's sweeping the sprawl. That's right, it's time for... So You Think You Can Save a Princess! <laughs> what the hell is going on? Uh, that's right, Lil. Today you're getting the chance to send one of these lucky adventurers on the escapade of a lifetime to search for and rescue your beloved Princess Desdemona. I didn't ask to do this. And let's find out who those lucky adventurers are. Adventurer number one is a hard-headed, go-getting warrior from the desert plains of the alluring Marvog Empire. Please welcome Neo War Killer. Adventurer number two is a nomad by nature, mage by profession, who likes the rain and getting caught in a pina colada. It's Articulous Flame Hands. And finally, adventurer number three. You might recognize this thief from their wanted poster. Wanted dead or alive for looking so darn good, let's hear it for Perry Shoutsen! I don't... I still don't fully understand what's happening. And no heroic voyager would be complete without a shadowy figure pulling the strings from the darkness. So let's welcome our sponsors, Lieutenant Stryker, Councilwoman Ash, and Court Jester Malcolm. I'm rooting for you. Might makes right. Focus and the day will be ours. Information is power. Aim for the knees and bite, bite, bite! Now, Lil, you're going to get the chance to ask these adventurers a series of questions to determine their suitability for this quest. At the end of the third round, you choose the winner of the grand prize, being sent on a perilous mission to save the princess, a few guaranteed brushes with death, and a coupon for an all-you-can-eat dining experience at Monty's, home of the soup. Hmm, Dad does love Monty's. Let's do this. All right, Lil, what would you like to ask our trio of intrepid would-be heroes? Where do you come from? And who would you like to ask? 
born in shadows, deep in the caves below the mining city of Mosh on the outskirts of Petrard. I grew up in darkness. In fact, the first time I saw daylight was last Thursday. I don't need to tell you what a surprise that was. Who knew colors were so... colorful? You can ask another adventurer if you want. I was born on the battlefield with a sword in both hands. Slaughtered 12 enemies that day. My mother was so proud. I was disappointed. If I had really applied myself, I think I could have killed at least two more. And your second question is? Let's say you save the princess and she falls in love with you. What's your ideal first date? And who's that one for? Here we go. We break into the Museum of Modern History here in the Sprawl. The security's a joke. We steal the crown and scepter of King Oswin that's housed there. We split the profits 50-50, shake hands, and go our separate ways. What a date! You can ask another adventurer if you like. Easy. We engage in feats of strength. Combat without weaponry, using only our bodies one against the other. And as we begin to sweat as we intertwine our limbs... Oh, okay. <laughs> I think we're done here. That answer unearthed the full extent of your incompetence. I was ready to vow the child with mine. Let's stick to the format, folks. There's a rich tradition we're preserving here. Please, wait your turn. Hmm. A warrior does not wait his or her turn. He or she acts. All right, Neil, calm down now. Hmm. Hmm. You are gaslighting me? And the berserker spirits of my ancestors, Mike Melroy. Uh-oh. Looks like the warrior has entered the heightened state of berserker mode. Ooh. Lil, which contestant do you think will be able to get us out of this dilly of a pickle? Don't look at me. Or you can try, but I'll be out of here. Smoke bomb. Blood for just a few more seconds. You, what's your favorite animal? What? A moose? That's too big! I'm not licensed to conjure anything bigger than a bread box! A bread box, Lil! Blood rage! <laughs> Gather for just a few more seconds. You, what's your favorite animal? Neil, look at this little fella. <sighs> I, I, I feel the blood rage calming. I can't murder everyone present in front of something so small and perfect. I am calm. Phew. I'm glad you didn't pick anything larger than a bread box. I'm not licensed for that. <sighs> Due to that unscheduled outburst, we are a little tight for time. Lil, do we squeeze in one more round, or are you feeling ready to choose? We could have all died. Be that as it may, we still need your help. I think I got one more round in me. Lil. What's your final question going to be? What's your favorite childhood memory? 
And you're asking? Not too many great memories from the mining caves of Mosh, but when I was about 11 years old, a group of kids took me under their wing. They taught me how to pick pockets and become a proper thief. They told me I could consider myself at home, consider myself one of the family. They'd taken me so strong, it was clear we were gonna get along. I swear I've heard that somewhere before. Sung. You're mistaken. You can ask another adventurer if you like. I received my first battle scar when I was five. You can see it here, across my cheek. Recess was a tough trial for all Marvagian children. As I rained blows down upon that third grader, I smiled. I knew even then that I would never forget this glorious day. Uh-oh, you know what that means! I have no idea what that means! This is so stupid. You're stupid! That sound means it's time for the lightning round! Lil, please choose the adventure that you'd like to see play the lightning round. All right, Neil, are you ready for the lightning round? I am. Too bad. Looks like that wasn't as enlightening as we'd hoped. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That wasn't real, right? Uh-oh! You know what that sound means! Oh god, not again! My conscience can't take much more of this! That sound means we are out of time! All right, Lil, now's your moment of truth. Who do you want to choose to rescue Princess Desdemona? Well, you can't. He's dead. Choose again. My hero would have been the right choice if he wasn't a pile of ash. There will be consequences for this. Harsh consequences. My mage can heal a wound with a word, or smash through a rock wall with a wave of his wrist. Don't overthink it, Lil. Make the right choice. The thieving arts might not be as sexy as a halberd or a fistful of magic missiles, but we have no idea what's befallen the princess. And my guy is your guy. Ladies and gentlemen, humans and other ones, the winner of So You Think You Can Save a Princess and proud owner of an all-you-can-eat dining experience at Monty's Home of the Soup is... Harry Shelton, the Thief! Hey, hey, everything's coming up Millhouse! And that's all for us here today. Please help control the pet population, have your gargoyle spayed or neutered. So long, everybody!
Lil, Lil, wake up. Huh? I think it's time we had the talk. What? What time is it? There comes a time in every young person's life when they have to work their dad's shift at the guard shed while he goes and bets on the goblin ball game. Yep, it's happening. You bet it is. You'll meet exciting people. I'm bringing a basket of baked goods to my family. You'll get to use the tools of the trade. You wish to challenge me to ceremonial combat? And if you get in trouble, just pick up the phone and call one of the official advisors. They're always happy to help. Wait, you're going to have everyone I know thrown in jail? Well, I wasn't going to, but that's a much better idea. So, think you'll be okay? Of course, Dad. But if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do things my way. Before I go and face my destiny, can you spot me a fiver? This moron doesn't speak for us. Mind if we just leave? Oh, Lil, do speak up. I can barely hear you over all that racket. Do not admit anyone else today. We're full up to half an hour. Is it that you don't have it, or that you don't want to give it to me? Oh, Orlando was a a real a Pardon my goblin. Wait a minute, you're gonna give me, a 12-year-old, the power to rewind time? Well, I wasn't going to, but that's a much better idea. Try not to do any irreversible damage. Lil, Lil, wake up. Charmed to make your acquaintance, young Gateminder. I am Tyronius Athanatos, son of Briel and Darunia Athanatos. I have been summoned to deliver the keynote speech at the Festival of Magical Freedom tonight, hosted by the Mages Guild. Will you require anything further? Glad you called. Frankly, I was worried you guardsmen never followed the writ due to illiteracy. Admit the mage and my people will escort him to the venue. I will inspire my fellow mages to throw off the shackles of oppression forced upon them by the weak and frightened smaggle powers that be. Tonight, we will demand the freedom to flex our might, freedom to control our destiny, freedom to unleash our powers. Freedom. Snore! Where do you get these people? Get rid of him! You have no right to deny me, no right to even stand in my view, you pathetic smaggle. What's that? Smaggle. Yes, that is the word we mages use to describe worthless, magicless beings such as you. You are a prime grade A example of a smaggle. Dude, that's pretty weak. No, it is not weak. It cuts to the core. Nah, that's lame. Get out of here.
afternoon. I am here to pick up my two kids from the no-good, stingy, low-life of a father who happens to be my lying, cheating, low-life of an ex-husband, Orlando. His address is there on this incomprehensible, illegible letter my kids sent me. Believe me, I would love to have him get off his sorry butt and bring them to me for once. I don't know how to tell you this, but there's more to this letter than meets the eye. There's a hidden message written here. It says, Come, son, mommy, Kelly is night more. Does that make sense to you? Oh my god! My boys don't know how to spell! But also, that thing about Kelly being the worst! second to run her through my known criminal database. Okay. Her husband, sorry, ex-husband, Orlando, is a person of interest in a few misdemeanors down at the Goblin Ball Arena. And the girlfriend, Kelly, is a waitress at a local restaurant named Monty's. Not the type of characters I'd trust my kids with for a week. If I had kids, which I don't. But if I did, they'd be able to handle any threat. A cyclops, you say? How interesting. I have a drawer full of monocles at home I've been meaning to do something with. Ask them if they want to take them off my hands. I'm not going to do that. Drat. Okay, cutlery. Denied your rightful home once again. Back on the floor you go. for ya. Good luck. What in the bloody blazing blasted hell is the hold up? Why have we stopped, Welp? Well, sir, the guard... Silence! Speak when spoken to, or you'll get the whip! Welp! Yes, sir. Now, you, child, let me pass. I have important business to attend to. Come on, shake a leg. B.S. waits for no man. B.S.? Bank of the Sprawl. Well, that's unfortunate. Cheddar. No, ma'am. It is gold. Silence! Yes, it is gold, but it is legitimate. Certainly not blood gold, if that's what you were thinking. Well, I wasn't before you said anything. I think I'll have to take a sample of this for, you know, science. Why, you greedy little urchin. I think I like you more than ever. Now, since you are finished rifling through my personal belongings, you insufferable, petty little monster, let me pass. Hmm, I wonder what the stamp on these gold bars means. Maybe it's decodable. I'd like to take a closer look at those gold bars. The symbols on these gold bars are definitely not issued by the Bank of the Sprawl. This is blood gold and definitely illegal!
precisely 6.15 tonight after the bank of the sprawl has closed for the day, I am being met by the head teller, Mr. Dunn, who will be escorting me to my safety deposit box. Once inside, I have a rather sizable deposit of gold bullion being carried by my darling servant, Welp. I couldn't do any of this without him, but I will never let my secret love show for the sake of my position. What on earth? What are you staring at? Oh, master! I knew you cared! What? Poppycock! It's the goblin's fault, isn't it? Nasty, deceptive creatures. What about this? Let me through the gate, but I shall leave the goblin tied up outside like the cur he is. But sir, the gold! Silence! All right, you rotten little girl, I'll go. But you will rue the day you crossed me. Lil, you gotta close down the shed for the day and come with me immediately. By now you've heard that Princess Desdemona has disappeared, right? Good. Any other week, the royal advisors might have given her a day or two before sounding the alarm. But with the mucky mucks from Petrard and Marvog in town, we have to get her back before things around here get any worse. I hope nothing bad happened to her, but what does any of this have to do with me? I asked my boss the same thing. In fact, I said, why the hell would they need that piece of... You know, that's not important now. Do what you have to do to close up shop here, and then you're coming downtown to the city council chambers with me. Sprawl. That's right, it's time for So You Think You Can Save a Princess! <laughs> now, Lil, you're going to get the chance to ask these adventurers a series of questions to determine their suitability for this quest. Alright, Lil, what would you like to ask our trio of intrepid would-be heroes? What's your idea of a perfect rescue? And who would you like to ask? Two words. Smoke bombs. Makes everything so much cooler. Best heists are ones where they don't even realize they are being robbed. Ocean's Eleven style, baby! You can ask another adventurer if you like. It begins with me vaporizing a few low-level lockies on the type. Uh, then we build to a dramatic face-off with a superior villain. Lightning flashes, mythical beasts are summoned and dispatched, all the fireworks come out. I cast a transfiguration spell, turning our would-be kidnapper into a small cricket. Or a mouse, or anything really. It just has to be small, so I can keep it with me as a reminder of my awesome powers. And your second question is? You encounter an enemy party of magic users. One of them casts a level 3 magic missile spell. What do you do? And who's that one for? If you think a bunch of pointy hats are getting to jump on me, you've got another thing coming. But okay, let's suppose some Penn and Teller wannabes do get me in their sights. Just watch these dodge skills. I'm over here now. And now I'm here. And now I'm back where I started. Blink of an eye. I'm like Nightcrawler over here. 
You can ask another adventurer if you like. Level three. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Please, I reached level three in the tutorial. I could conjure an army of sparrows or moles or whatever small creature best suited my purpose. Wouldn't it be better to conjure larger animals? Maybe something more ferocious? More ferocious than a mole? <laughs> Actually, I'm not licensed to conjure anything bigger than a bread box, but, but they really are scary. That answer displayed a lack of honor, courage, and strength. I would have pummeled you with my response. Let's stick to the format, folks. There's a rich tradition we're preserving here. Please, wait your turn. Hmm. A warrior does not wait his or her turn. He or she acts. All right, Neil, calm down now. Hmm. Hmm. You are gaslighting me and the berserker spirits of my ancestors, Mike Melroy. <sighs> Looks like the warrior has entered the heightened state of Berserker mode! Ooh. Lil, which contestant do you think will be able to get us out of this dilly of a pickle? Neil, uh, keep it together for just a few more seconds. You, what's your favorite animal? Neil, look at this little fella! <sighs> Feel the blood rage calming. I can't murder everyone present in front of something so small and perfect. I am calm. Phew! I'm glad you didn't pick anything larger than a bread box. I'm not licensed for that. <sighs> Due to that unscheduled outburst, we are a little tight for time. Lil, do we squeeze in one more round or are you feeling ready to choose? I think I got one more round in me. What's your final question going to be? What are your plans after you rescue the princess? And you're asking? Are you kidding me? I make this gig and I'm set for life! Rescuing the sole heir to the whole freaking sprawl? Insta-retired, baby! I'll be sipping pina coladas on the crystal shores of Lake Inez before you can say, would you like a curly straw for that pina colada, sir? Oh, I love pina coladas. They mentioned it in my introduction. Then the first round's on me. I picked his pocket earlier. You can ask another adventurer if you like. This rescue will be incredibly high profile, and I hope to use it as a springboard to a placement on the High Council of the Mages Guild. From there, mm, the sky's the limits. Well, two four-year terms followed by a lifetime pension is the limit, but still, not too shabby. Uh-oh, you know what that means! I have no idea what that means! This is so stupid. You're stupid! That sound means it's time for the lightning round! Lil, please choose the adventure that you'd like to see play the lightning round. Alright, Articulus, are you ready for the lightning round? I am. Most impressive. I felt that a little. <laughs> well deduced that I'm an elemental mage, Lil. Yep, that wasn't a random lucky guess at all. Uh-oh, you know what that sound means. Oh god, not again. That sound means we are out of time! Alright, Lil, now's your moment of truth. Who do you want to choose to rescue Princess Desdemona? My adventurer stood up to lightning. Can the others do that? I'd like to see them try. Choose wisely. Choose my adventurer. Don't overthink this. My hero is by far the strongest and the most experienced in battle. A natural choice to save our dear princess. 
The thieving arts might not be as sexy as a halberd or a fistful of magic missiles, but we have no idea what's befallen the princess. And my guy is your guy. Ladies and gentlemen, humans and other ones, the winner of So You Think You Can Save a Princess and proud owner of an all-you-can-eat dining experience at Monty's Home of the Soup is... Articulous Flame Hands, the mage! Aha! Wonderful child. Well chosen. And that's all for us here today. Please help control the pet population, have your gargoyle spayed or neutered. So long, everybody! a basket of baked goods to my family. She's not doing any of the things we told her to do. We couldn't have been more clear. She's supposed to be enforcing martial law. You're sending me to jail? I'm a children's birthday party magician. Increasing my sphere of influence. The princess goes missing, and all of a sudden there's a no goblins order? I forget what I told her to do, but I think it involved somebody's pet. I confess, I was smuggling illegal pixie dust inside the dead cat. How do we get it through her thick skull that she's supposed to be listening to us? I am listening. Did you forget I was here again? What? Of course not! Who the hell is that? Okay, Lil, you got this. The day of the royal wedding approaches, but a change is coming! Will you RSVP for the revolution? I know you couldn't resist the chance to place an illegal sports bet with your old pal Fredo. Welcome to Garby's Emporium of Wonder. I did not slay 90 ballerinas to be denied entry by some freckle-faced babe. I don't want to be rude, but you seem, well, pretty baked. Absolutely. Oh, wait. Your name is Count Heinrich von Pyre? Yes. Why? And that's all for us here today. Please help control the pet population, have your gargoyle spayed or neutered. 
So long, everybody.